Hello, today we're going to be talking about the properties of water. This is a tutorial for Science 10, uh, Lesson 4.2. Now, first of all, we want to understand water has several unique characteristics that make it valuable as a molecule associated with life processes. Um, it has a high specific heat capacity, a high latent heat of fusion, a high latent heat of vaporization, a large amount of surface tension, and it is less dense as a solid than it is as a liquid. Now, um, we're going to talk about these, these different uh, characteristics, but all of them are, are related to uh, the hydrogen bonding that occurs between uh, different water molecules where the positively or partially positively charged hydrogen is attracted to the partially positive oxygen of uh, a different water molecule. Okay, and these hydrogen bonds, um, you know, are responsible for a lot of these, these specific characteristics. So, specific heat capacity. Water has the highest heat capacity of any liquid or solid except for ammonia and the amount of heat energy in joules uh, to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Now here it says one kilogram uh, is sometimes described in kilojoules per kilogram degree Celsius but it also can be described in terms of uh, grams, um, joules per gram degree Celsius. And so here you see the the formula for specific heat capacity represented by C equals Q which is the amount of heat energy in joules divided by M and the mass could be um, grams or kilograms. Uh, I think we use grams mostly in this course. And once you get into chemistry 30 you'd be using kilograms. And delta T is the change in temperature. So if it changed from 5 to 10 degrees the change in temperature would be 5 degrees. Okay, now the formula to the right can be used to calculate specific heat capacity of a substance. The specific heat capacities are constant, so they don't change, and they're going to be unique for specific substances. So the specific heat capacity for liquid water is 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius. Now the Latin heat of fusion is a different quantity. It is the amount of heat energy required to change a given mass of a specific substance from solid to liquid or vice versa, okay, without changing the temperature. So if I had, for example, ice, you know, solid water uh, at zero degrees, and for it to change to water at zero degrees, so no temperature change, it would take 333 joules per gram of that ice. Okay, so the Latin heat of fusion would be 333 joules per gram. And this again is a constant value. It doesn't change. It's always 333 joules per gram uh, for ice. Now it would be different for different substances, however. Okay, uh, the latent heat of vaporization is the amount of heat energy required to change a given mass of a specific substance from liquid to gaseous state, or vice versa without changing temperature. Okay, so um, if I had liquid water at 100 degrees Celsius, it's boiling point, and I wanted to convert it to steam at 100 degrees Celsius, I'd have to put in um, this latent heat of fusion, which is 220 or 2,260 joules per gram. So that's a very large heat uh, value. Okay, that's why steam contains a you know a lot of energy. <clears throat> Okay, now if I had liquid water and I want to turn it to steam, I'd have to put in this um, 2,260 joules per gram. But if I had steam, I would get out 2,260 joules per gram as it evaporated, or as it condensed rather, from steam to water. Okay, so the hydrologic cycle, we're talking about water, uh, this is also known as the water cycle. So we want to be familiar with this. So if we start with, you know, water in an ocean, for example, um, evaporation is the first thing that's going to happen, and then you have condensation creating the clouds. Now you have evaporation happening from bodies of water and from, you know, 
ground sources. But when you have water being released in vapor form from trees, it's known as transpiration. So evaporation and transpiration both lead to condensation and the creation of clouds. So this is water storage in the atmosphere and then those clouds will at some point uh, precipitate. So they can, you know, snow, rain, whatever. And uh, you can have water storage in uh, the form of ice and snow, glaciers, as well as water storage in oceans. Okay, but then once you get your runoff to the streams, well, you can have evaporation as soon as it's on the surface. You can have evaporation from bodies of water. But you also have, when it precipitates, uh, groundwater infiltration. And this can lead to groundwater storage as well as groundwater discharge. So the groundwater eventually makes its way out to uh, a body of water. But you still have some water storage in the ground as well. And that is part of the water cycle. But once it gets back to a body of water or to the surface, then the cycle begins again. Now, we're going to talk about a few different ways of, of transmitting energy. Uh, one of them is conduction. So in conduction, you have the transfer of heat energy by direct contact. So you can see in our animation here, you have heat um, that is contacting one molecule or causing it to vibrate but because it's adjacent to other molecules that vibration spreads okay so conduction is transfer of heat by direct contact convection uh, this is the transfer of energy through the circulation of fluids so fluids include gases and liquids Okay, so in convection, you have energy at one spot, but due to those fluids, either gases or liquids, uh, being heated, they become less dense. And as they become less dense, they will rise. Less dense things go on the top, more dense things go on the bottom, and they rise, and then they will cool, and then become more dense and sink again. So this rising and sinking, rising and sinking, uh, happens as the fluids are heated and become less dense and rise, cool, become more dense and then descend. And this causes convection currents. Radiation is another way to transfer energy and is the transfer of energy through space without direct contact and uh, the best example of that is light. So light travels say from the sun um, all the way to earth and heats up the earth. Okay. So there's no direct contact between the Earth and the Sun, but there is uh, the radiated energy that goes from the Sun to the Earth. And that concludes our discussion of the properties of water and uh, heat transfer.